<clears throat> okay, so this is the vertebral column. Uh, and we'll look at the vertebral column as a whole and then look at the individual vertebrae. The vertebral column is made up of um, different sections. So we have the cervical vertebrae, and these are numbered, lettered and numbered, C1 through C7. Okay, and that's superior to inferior. And then we have the thoracic vertebrae, which are identified as T1 through T12. And the lumbar vertebrae are uh, L1 through L5. Okay. Some people do have a sixth um, lumbar vertebra. So <clears throat> that's, that's not uncommon, especially for taller people. Okay. Uh, the vertebral column has curves to it, natural curves. And the cervical curvature is an anterior curvature, it curves towards the front, where the thoracic curves towards the back, so it's a posterior curvature. The lumbar curvature is towards the front, and the pelvic curvature is towards the back. The sacrum and the coccyx make up the pelvic curvature. I'm actually going to skip this one, and we're going to come back to this one. I want to just look, start here with the lumbar vertebrae, because this is easier to show all the different pieces or all the different parts of a singular um, vertebra. So the vertebra, this is the anterior side. So this is um, anterior, and this is posterior. So single vertebrae is, has a body, and the body is this part here. Body really supports the weight of uh, the person. So this is the weight-bearing portion. The transverse processes are processes that stick out laterally, and the spinous process sticks out posteriorly. The spinous process are those little bumps that you feel when you run your finger down someone's spine. Um, there's also, uh, oh, and then the parts that connect them, the pedicles. Pedicle is the part that connects the body to the transverse process. Okay. And the lamina connects the transverse process to the um, spinous process. It's the part of the vertebra, there it is. The vertebral foramen is the foramen that um, the spinal cord passes through. So this is how the spinal cord is protected. And there's gonna be a superior articular process, which is going to articulate with the vertebra above, and an inferior articular process will articulate with the vertebrae below. One of the um, ways to distinguish the lumbar vertebrae from all the other ones is the lumbar vertebrae have a huge body. So this large body is because the lumbar vertebrae are a place where we have lots of, um, lots of forces from the, from the body. Okay. So now we're back here. The cervical vertebrae uh, have a few differences. One of the differences is, is they have um, foramen through their transverse processes. So these transverse foramen is a place where spinal nerves can exit and enter the cervical vertebrae. Um, and so that's the main difference with these ones. There are two special cervical vertebrae. There's the atlas, which is C1, and the atlas is like, um, like uh, I remember atlas, the um, man from Greek mythology that held up the world. So the atlas holds up your world. 
and the atlas are, is the inferior articulation for the occipital bone. And so these are the facets here that articulate for the occipital bone. So this holds up your skull. Um, other differences for the atlas is the atlas doesn't have a body. Okay, so there's no body for the atlas. Um, and also the atlas does not have a spinous process. The other special one is the access, which is C2. And C2 is special because it has this little dens, looks like a little tooth here, and the dens is what the atlas rotates around when you swivel your head back and forth. So this is the area where rotation occurs um, to swivel the head back and forth. Okay, and that's only found on C2, the axis. Thoracic vertebrae, like we said, there are 12 thoracic vertebrae. Uh, the best way to tell the thoracic vertebrae from the other ones is that the spinous process of the thoracic vertebrae have a more downward orientation, whereas the other ones have a more um, straight out orientation. So to tell the thoracic vertebrae from the other one, it has a more downward orientation. The other thing special for the thoracic vertebrae is they have these facets for the ribs here and here. And these facets are where the ribs articulate posteriorly because each of the thoracic vertebrae is the posterior articulation for the ribs. So rib one articulates with T1, rib two with T2, so on and so forth. Okay, we're going to talk about the lumbar ones, the sacrum. Sacrum is made up of five fused vertebrae and the um, sacrum makes up the, and the coccyx together, make up the posterior wall of the pelvic cavity. The, um, oh, and then the coccyx is made up of four fused vertebrae. So sacrum is five fused, coccyx is four fused. Okay. The coccyx is the tailbone. So when people say, I fell my tailbone, that's what they're talking about. So this is the um, the ribs and the sternum. The we're going to start with the sternum. The sternum is made up of three bones that are um, joined together. The most superior portion is called the manubrium. So this is the manubrium, and then the larger or longer portion is the body. And then the last piece is the xiphoid process. So if you took um, CPR within, well, 10 years ago or even before, you used to have people take two fingers and move up from the xiphoid process so they didn't break it off. So you'd be doing your compressions here. Um, they don't focus on that as much anymore. The ribs are attached to the sternum through the coastal cartilage. Um, and the ribs are numbered superior to inferior. Ribs one through seven are attached to the sternum through their own coastal cartilage. And those are called true ribs. Eight, nine, and 10 are called false ribs because their coastal cartilage attaches to rib seven's coastal cartilage. So they don't have a direct connection. There's um, eight, nine, and 10 have to attach to rib seven's coastal cartilage. And then 11 and 12 are called floating ribs because they don't have, um, they have no anterior articulation. So they don't attach to the sternum at all. Okay, this is a rib. Um, ribs have 
we've said ribs have these um, has a shaft and then it has this uh, posterior articulation with the thoracic vertebrae so the head of the rib articulates with the posterior articulation um, with the body of the of the vertebrae thoracic vertebrae and then the tubercle articulates with the transverse process. And that's it for ribs.